Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and we're proud to announce and pleased to announce that we've launched ZimBase. We've been working with data so long for these lessons, we realize that it's a little complex on the PHP side. So if you go to the code section here, we've collapsed. You can collapse the various code sections. We've collapsed them and brought us the libraries up here at the top. So you'll need to scroll down to the libraries and take a look. Zimbase right there at the bottom of the libraries. If you click that, Zimbase helps you safely access your database at one-third the MySQLi. So we've reduced the code and we're going to take you through what that looks like. So first of all, we use PHP strings and arrays as inputs. So here's an example right here. We're going to see this in code as well, where we're just passing in strings and arrays uh, there instead of the MySQL or instead of the SQL statements. And it works with Zimbind and provides JSON results and uh, also handles things like uh, posting get variables. When it works with Zimbind, it doesn't, you don't even need to worry about variables at all. It just kind of handles that stuff. And uh, here we are getting a reply or sending a reply back with our JSON data if we need to. So that's kind of what it looks like. There are some examples. So here's an HTML example. We're going to look through the first two examples, hopefully, in this video. And then we'll uh, come back to another video for this uh, star example. Let's take a look at the first one here. So it's a simple HTML form that, bing bang, he is going to be a hammer tosser. Yay! And we submit that. And now we're showing the last five entries for the person that we've submitted. Bing bang, there he is and the last 40 entries overall once there are 40 entries. So that's uh, one example that we'll take a look through. And another one is here with shapes. We've seen something like this where if I move that and refresh now, uh, it saves it. So that, that's what you would see as well. Well, I mean, by the time you look at this, somebody else may have changed these shapes. So let's change shape and we'll refresh. And there it is. Even if we turn off the controls there, uh, let's move the squiggle about. Woo, there we go. And refresh. And there it is. So if we were to open this up in another browser uh, window or you were to open this up, it's the same thing. So this is now <clears throat> saved to the database. Cool, huh? Uh, so we're going to take a look at those two examples. And in the next video, we'll take a look at the stars example. All right, let's drop down to some code. Hopefully you're feeling well in these strange times we're in. Uh, dropping down to code. There we go. All right, so Zimbase is a PHP class that helps you do the various database connections. So it's um, you would require it. So here, here is the Zimbase class right here zim underscore base dot php and i want to show you in here that you would set up your server access in here as well and that and that's nice because you since you require this file you don't see this code in your main file so you could show other people your main file and just not show them your zim base code and Indeed, that's that's handy. So inside of here would be your database connection with your username and password and stuff. Now we don't want we don't want to show you ours, so we've required where ours is. So when you set up your Zimbase, you can come and get the zip and get this zimbase.php file. You need to do something. You need to come in here, comment these out, like that. Put in. You probably can leave the local host. Put in your username, your password, and your database name there. And then either comment this out or you can just delete it completely. Boom. So now this will be yours. You save this up and you're good. The car set you could just leave like that. All right. So uh, how you would then bring this Zimbase file in is uh, in an example here. So here's the example PHP. And 
uh, we're outputting some HTML first, but down at the start of the PHP part, you would require once your zimbase.php. And then all of that zimbase class comes into this PHP and we can make use of it, for instance, to get our variables. Base, you start with a dollar sign base that's given to you by the base class. Make vars, and what this will do is it will grab either get variables or post variables um, that are called person and occupation and make a, a global variable here, dollar sign person and dollar sign occupation that, that we can use. So if you recall, that would be your is sets and, you know, checking to see if the dollar sign underscore post came in. Is it a set? So it makes that part a little bit easier for you. Now here we are inserting into our table. So that's our table name, base.insert into our table. Uh, dollar sign persons, where the field name is person. The field name is occupation, dollar sign occupation, and with a date of now. <clears throat> so that inserts into our table. Yay, that's it. So <laughs> that just saved about eight lines of really kind of complicated binding stuff. So this uses MySQLi in the background, but you don't have to worry about it. You just put the values in here, and then it handles it for you. And if our affected rows, so there's a couple things. You could get an error, but the error just says, did we have an error connecting to the table? It doesn't actually give you an error if you couldn't select something or um, submit something. Uh, so you might want to check for the affected rows. Have, have, have we, if it's more than one, that means we've added something. And therefore your data has been uh, successfully added. Here we are uh, selecting things now. So uh, we um, store in the result like we did before. We store in the result the base dot select this time from our table. We're going to select all the fields where the person is equal to the person. And then we'll order by date, descending, and limit five. So this is called the where parameter, and I'll show you where we can find what you're supposed to put in here in, in just a second. We'll just like glance through them to start. If our num rows is less than, than one, so this is a little bit different. We're selecting. We're not going to be affecting any rows. We're now going to be checking num rows. By the way, the affected rows is a, a MySQL I term. And we've just used it here as well, and so are num rows. So these will match your traditional MySQL type uh, results. So result num rows, if that's less than one, oopsie daisy, we didn't select any. There is no data. Otherwise, we're going to start our HTML table, and we're going to loop through each of the results uh, as an associative array. So that's going to be like an array of associative arrays and we're going to collect that as the record and then we can get the record at the person and the record at the occupation so that's our loop it's very similar to how you would gra grab your results back with mysqli except you didn't have to do any mysqli <clears throat> um right uh sorry excuse my little status messages um so there you go. That's an associative array. You can also get an array, and what that is is it will return a result of arrays of arrays, and then you would get dollar sign record at zero, dollar sign record at one, if that's where they are. But since you don't really know where they are, it's sometimes easier to. Well, actually, you would know where they are if we don't say star. So if you said uh, person here and comma occupation, then it doesn't matter what field uh, order they are in. Occupation, sorry, I'm not paying attention here. Um, this would be uh, number zero then here, and this would be number one there if we asked for those specific fields. Okay, so you could do that too. 
And the other thing is if you've only got one result coming back, which is quite often, especially when we're storing things like in this collage example, we're going to see we've only got one result that we're going to want to deal with. Then you don't need to loop each time. You would just ask for a dollar sign result dot record. And that gives you the first record. Uh, great. And if you want the first array, then it would be dollar sign results row. And you would not be looping through all this stuff. You would just be using this result. So no for each. You would just use that. But we'll see that next one. Okay. So that's a little bit of an introduction there as to what's going on. What else is this? So the last 40 entries, this is really the same thing, basically, looping through all those. Okay, do you need to see the HTML? Just briefly, the HTML of that is just your normal HTML select stuff. We're submitting, and uh, that's the input. Where's the form field? Here it is. We're submitting to our base example via post. So just your traditional HTML form, and now we're collecting it here. I think if you take a look and, and compare, this is just like way shorter, and hopefully it's pretty easy to, to understand. So let's see where we can see information about these commands. Okay, and we'll go back to the HTML here, uh, or, well, whatever you want to call this, the site. And we press this one right here, command. So you can grab the zip and get all the zip files. Okay. And here is the commands. Also on there, just before we leave that, there's Zim School, which shows you information about that in Lesson 9. And there's the Creative Coding Lessons, this video as well. And then here are the example links. Okay, so that's all on your Zim Base page, which once again is available huh, in your... Um, yep, nerp, nerp, nerp in your code page. So this is the Zim code page. And you have to scroll way down. We've hidden things <clears throat> here. Scroll way on down and you can find it here. <clears throat> My apologies. Our grumble, the grumblies, the morning grumblies. All right, what were we taking a look at? We were in here and we were wanting to look at the commands. So here's the commands page, F11 uh, that. And here's the connection, so how you can connect. <coughs> here's us collecting variables. We do this all on the, the dollar sign base. Here's us inserting. We put the table first. We put the variables we want to insert as pairs. We then would um, choose to do an update. I'm going to show you an update right here. So that's the next one here. So we'll come back. Well, let's go to it now. Uh, but well, okay. Just before we do, let's take a, look, take a look at the results here. So you might want to check to see if there's an error, or the affected rows, an echo, an error. Otherwise, you can. Uh, oh, uh, these are the results. Dollar sign result query. You can um, access these things uh, if there's no error. All right, so if you ask for the query, it will show you the SQL query that it is using, that it has created from here. So you see what's happened is we've asked for an ID of ID. So there's the idea, insert into this ID field, but where the value is question mark. So that's our binding. And then it's going to take that and use use that down here. So here's here are the values one two three. You see our ID is one two three. So it's going to end up putting one two three into that question mark. You don't need to worry about this stuff, but that is there just for your reference so that you can check to see well what would the SQL be uh, from that neat huh? Um, and then uh, there's a success, so you can ask for whether it has a success or an error. If there's no error, you can check either one of these. It's, it's, they're going to be opposite. If there's an error, it won't be success. And then here, this is telling us the affected rows. Now, the affected rows are actually kind of uh, useful. Um, let's talk about the, up, the, the version where we're updating. So what we found often happens is the very first time you want to insert, but then from then on, you want to update. And that's a common pattern in database manipulation. So they've actually created an SQL statement here that 
um, says, hey, insert this stuff into our table. But if it's a duplicate key, so if we're trying to add it to the same ID that already exists, then we want to update the data. Isn't that neat? So that's a pretty magical SQL statement, but it's a little bit lengthy to remember how to do. And, you know, I went most of my life in SQL not even knowing that it was there. Uh, you know, would have, would have saved me a lot of time. You know, this is going to save a statement, basically. Uh, otherwise, you've got what, what you would normally have to do is say, hey, select this ID. Is it there? Oh, if it's not there, then insert. If it is there, then update. Right, so a three three statements that would be. So this is handling three statements, and take a look at what we've done here. We're still using the base um, dot insert. If I say dot, that's <laughs> that's how I read that in JavaScript. That would be a dot. So the base dot insert. So we're saying, hey, insert into this table the following information. But if we provide a, another parameter there, this is the update parameter now. Um, if this ID is already existing, then just update that. Isn't that neat? So that handles three SQL statements just like that. So that's why we put the update in here. It seems like maybe you would want to do the traditional table, then the variables, where, and the more. The thing is, with an insert, you hardly ever use the where insert where where what <laughs> I don't know what I'd use that for um, and the more so you hardly use these things they are available I don't, I don't even know if you can do them with an insert but anyway so insert these variables is usually what you end up doing um, however we've got uh, an update isn't that cool that tags tag tags along there all right so coming down to uh, a plain update we still have a plain update if we want to update something there you go so update these things where the ID oh yeah that's right that that would make sense so if you're not um, doing the sort of the insert update uh, you definitely want to to have things where you can update yeah this is an update this is an insert, so those, those are different things. Certainly, when you update something, you'll want to be able to specify, hey, what record am I updating, most likely, usually through an ID like that. So there's an update. That's pretty easy, huh? And again, we can use the affected rows. Oh, forgot to talk about affected rows. So this is a little bit trickier with the affected rows, as you can see. It returns a 1 if this was a new record. So if we inserted and there, there wasn't an ID already called that, then it's going to return a 1. It will return a 2 if we've just updated that. It returns a 0. <laughs> this is sort of weird. It returns a 0 if we update, but it's the same as what it was before. So in other words, we had a useless update. You know, we didn't need to update. Then it returns a zero, and it returns a minus one if it's unsuccessful. So you can just check for probably if uh, the affected rows is uh, greater than zero, and then it gives you the two successful uh, results there. Okay, back to the update. We get affected rows there. Great. Uh, here is the select. So we haven't seen the select yet. If you want to select just one record, then here's the easiest way you can do it. You can select from, so we could read, where it is it? Here it is. Select the ID and the data from this table where the ID is something, the bound ID. So that would be... We're selecting the ID and the data. It would be the first one here. So uh, Zimbase select from this table uh, these um, fields. So you put the fields in an array like that where the ID is dollar sign ID. So it doesn't read quite as nicely as SQL. If you know SQL, you can kind of say it as you go along there. Did you hear me do it? Select from, <laughs> or select these fields from this table where the <laughs> things are. But you do have your parameters up there to, to reference, and hopefully that will help. I think the neat thing about this is it's only PHP. Uh, well, uh, for the most part, there. You can do this more statement. The more statement is um, 
is the more SQL stuff. So let's see if I can find you an example of that order by ID. All right, so that is SQL, uh, but whatever. Okay, so where'd we get to the single? So our select would be kind of the same, although because we're asking for uh, a record with an ID equal to that ID, we're expecting one thing to come back. And we can say uh, check for error things if we want. So if there's zero records, then we don't we didn't get any results. And here we are accessing that record. Isn't that cool? So that just says, hey, give me that record. And then we can echo the record at the data. So that's the first associative array that is coming back. If we want the uh, um, an array instead of an associative array, then we would ask for a dollar sign result at row like that or dot row. So record gets you the associative array, row gets you the array. There's a few other things that come back to. You can find out how many fields and some extra metadata if you want. The record is the first record as an associative array. So here is what that looks like. That's what the ID, one, two, three, data, clients, new data. If you ask for a row, it's an array at zero is one, two, three, etc. If you ask for JSON, it gives you the first field and it assumes that that's JSON. If you ask for a JSON array, it gives you an array of the JSON of the first fields as JSON. And uh, this is asking for an associative array, but in this case, we've only got one thing coming back. So remember that the associative array is actually your, your data uh, of a results array. So you've always, you for a soch, an array, you always receive an array but with the SOCH, you receive an array of associative arrays. And for the array, you receive an array of arrays for each record. That's more important when you've got multiple. So here's examples of multiple. We've also thrown in a bunch of varieties of different um, common sort of uh, SQL statements, but uh, done with the Zim base format. And uh, then you can check the results in much the same way, but this time we would loop through our results. So if we've got more than one record or more than zero records, sorry, then we would say for each, uh, we are looping through our SOCH there as record. And we, this is one we saw earlier when we first looked at Zim, Zim base. And then here we are looping through the array of arrays. Let's go on down and see what that would look like down here. So in this case, uh, our num rows, the number rows that we returned is two. We've looped, we've looped through all of our data. So here's an array of two things and two associative arrays. That's what they are. And here's an array of two arrays, etc. Here's what the JSON looks like, or sorry, a JSON array looks like this with the two JSON elements in it, and this is what just dot JSON. So remember, if you ask for JSON, it's only the first one. If you ask for JSON array, it's an array of all the JSONs. Usually with JSON, when we store, when we bind from Zim, usually we're just storing one file, one, one, or one JSON uh, record, one JSON field, <laughs> that's it. So, uh, or one field and one JSON record. And so we're usually just using that one. It's kind of rare, but if you, if you break things up and want several of them, I guess you can use the array version. And there's what it would look like if we just got a record. So once again, this one's not quite as important because we, we were asking for a bunch of records. So why would you really ask for just the first one? You know, if you, if you were to do that, you could have just asked for the first one <laughs> rather than a bunch of records. Uh, here's how you can delete. So it's uh, what we've done is we found out from the last result what the ID is of the last record. So when we, this was a bunch of records, all of the records, we've got now asked for the result at the associate. 
So um, and at so that is that's the associative array is this one right here. That's the associative array, and now we're going to ask for that one. That well, that would be the result dot num rows minus one, one because it starts the index starts at zero. So that's us getting the last row, and what we're what we just got there is this associative array right here, and we ask for oops, this associative array right here, and now we're going to ask for the ID. There we are asking for the ID. So this is asking for the ID of the last row of our result. And we're going to delete it. <laughs> so now we're going to say, hey, please delete from ZimBase where the ID is that last ID that we just got. Neat, huh? That's why every time you run this, it still <laughs> keeps, like, this is actually real. This is running in behind. You're welcome to go look at this page. It's part of the zip file. This is the command.php page. Every time you run it, it adds something. There was one existing already in the database. But every time you run this, it adds something, and then it deletes it. <laughs> so the next time you run it, there's still one there. It adds something and deletes it. Neat, huh? And the, the two things, the existing data was the one that was there before. The new data is here. And every time you run it, <laughs> it adds it. So it shows it to you, add it here, and then it deletes it. And so the next time you run it, it adds it and deletes it. Etc. That's what's going on. If you want to just continue to use this but pass in plain SQL, you can always do that. There's some cases where we haven't, like here's truncating a table. Uh, we didn't really provide a command for that, so go ahead and pass in the truncate means empty. Um, do that. Now we didn't do that here, but uh, as it says here, not a percent and not really executing for this example. Here is how we can reply. So this works out when we reply to uh, to Zim, and well, it, it also would work if you're replying to HTML, but uh, works out well for applying to replying to Zim because it works out whether it needs to reply as a JSONP or an AJAX. So for JSONP, there were a few extra steps that we had to do there where we sent a header and we also had to prepare the return result. Well, with binding, this works automatically. All you have to do that. So it's abstracted a bunch of stuff there, makes it easy. And same with it if we ever need to lock. So we're going to see an example of locking in the next video. And Zim sets up a way to handle that locking as well. Zim, Zim base does. All right, I think that's pretty good. Now, did we take a look? I think there was one more that we needed to take a look at here was this example. We're almost done though. It won't take too long to just quickly take a take a peek in here to see how that code works. All right, let's reduce that down. And that was called shapes here. So uh, we're in shapes, and if we come on down into shapes, do, 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 here's our binding. So give your head a little shake. Um, we set up a new bind here. Now we've seen binding before in the earlier videos, and so this is pretty quick to just go over here. We, we set uh, a new bind. We're passing the information as get, although we could have set that to post. Because it's the server, we want to find out what information the server already has. So we're using a from to find out um, what information the server has. And then when that from is done, when it comes back, it calls this function right here. So this is the function that is in our from. Doot, 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 doot. Uh, I think it's all of it. Yeah, there's the end of the callback. We may as well not show anything until we get our data back. That's what the idea is here. Then we make a blob and we bind our blob right there to an ID of blob. We're going to bind the points of the blob, the X and the Y, where the, the controls are visible. And because we've got a couple things, it's level. So those are the, the properties that we want to bind. When we press up on the blob, when we finish moving the blob around, then we send uh, the information to the server. We bind to the server. 
Isn't that amazing? Unfortunately, when we hide our controls, it doesn't count as hiding the controls is done by clicking off the blob. Therefore, we're not pressing up on the blob. So we had to capture another event called controls hide, and we're going to bind when we controls hide to send the control visible data. Now, it, it is possible to actually only send this information right here inside here. So you can specify um, anything. You can specify bind to. You see how bind is on the, the general bind object. It's not actually on the blob. So when we run bind to, we're going to be sending information for the blob and information for the squiggle. Same with when we run the squiggle, we're sending the information for the squiggle and for, for the blob because it's just like all the information. That's fine. We're collecting just a total JSON file, putting it in the database, grabbing it back again and updating everything. It's no big deal because we don't really have all that much data. But if you really wanted to, you could bind only the blob's information. You could bind only the blob's information for control visible if you so desired. Uh, but it just makes a little, that makes it harder on the database. Then you have to sort of split that up and put it in its own field, possibly. <laughs> All right, so um, that's, the, uh, that's the bind information. I mean, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Hey, make a new bind, get some information from the data. Um, I don't know if you realize what's, what's going on here, but we've made a new blob. How did, how did the blob end up looking like the information from the database? Well, that's done in this bind. As soon as you bind this, it says, oh, I'm supposed to be binding these fields, or these record, or sorry, these fields, these properties. Do I have any data when we got the from? Does the bind store any data already of these things? And if so, please set the blob's properties to these things. So that's all being done in behind by the bind. We didn't have to do anything. We just said, hey, start up a new bind, find these properties. And then when we save it, we just said, hey, these are the properties we want to save. I mean, that's pretty amazing. It, it, <laughs> it's amazing. Now, if you're new to data, maybe you don't realize, uh, perhaps this still looks like a lot. You don't realize what this could be. <laughs> and I've worked with data for a long time, and this could be a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, even with binding, it's still... You know, there's still things to think about, but uh, it, it's it's pretty cool. So that's that. And then the PHP of the shape. You know, let's take a look. We're requiring our Zim base. Says, hey, Zim base. We're saying the ID that we've stored in the, in the database. This is stored under um, an ID of shapes. That's it. So we didn't store an ID for the blob and an ID for the squiggle. That would be two records, and we don't really need to do that. So don't mix up the ID in the database with the IDs of the binds. All right, Because when we bring in the binding data, this is what it looks like. The ID for the bind and its properties, the ID for the, the squiggle bind and its properties. Uh, more or less. Uh, these aren't exact. But we just take that and we store it in the database at the ID of shapes. Okay, so that this is different. This is the database ID for the, 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 uh, the record that holds our JSON data. And then this is the JSON data that includes the IDs for the, uh, the, the different binds. All right, you don't have to store each ID in a different database record. Okay, so you could, in other words, you can put as many shapes as you want in there. It's all just storing it in one table field. That's it. So one field holds all this JSON, and this is what happens. This is what happens. Okay, let's take a look. When we send that data to this data is being sent to the database here, we then want to insert it into the Zimbe shapes where the ID is equal to this one right here, shapes, and please insert this JSON data that we've received. Isn't that cool? Zimbind knows that you are collecting um, data, so it, it automatically sends data. It knows it's got data. Zim we didn't even say, hey, make some variables for data. It's already made. Zimbase um, does that. So Zimbind sends the thing as a either post or get 
called data, and Zimbe says, oh, we got some data. <laughs> Here you go, you got a dollar sign data. So that's done automatically. Now, do you remember what we've done here? What if this was the very first time that we run that, very first time that we've moved something? We're sending information to the database for the first time. Well, if there's no ID, then it inserts as it says here. But if there's already an ID, if this is now a second time, third time, or <laughs> 200th time, there's already an ID, so it doesn't insert, well, it updates instead. So this is doing the insert into, or if it's a duplicate key, update. And so it's going to update the JSON data rather than insert it. Roughly the same thing, it just updates it. If there's no uh, affected rows, this hardly ever happens. You can just leave it out if you want. Um, I mean, it's handy to test initially, but from then on, it's probably, <laughs> you're probably good. <laughs> so uh, in many cases, I've, I've done hundreds, hundreds uh, as a matter of fact, I just converted a hundred pages, I'm, I'm serious, a hundred pages in, Zen, uh, in Dan Zen. So all my Dan Zen stuff, I converted a hundred Dan Zens to this um, uh, Zim base here. And in many of those cases, uh, I realized that I had not even been doing any error checking. So I just took that out. <laughs> it survived this long without any error checking. I'm sure, sure it'll be fine. But if you want to error check, it's probably good practice, I suppose. Then here's how you can do that error checking. Uh, otherwise, you do still need to reply. So I suppose you'd have to do something like that. There we go. Right, base.reply, success, data added, uh, if you want. All right, um, good. And then from, here we are getting data from the database, at which point we would select from Zimbase shapes the JSON field. So that's all we need is the JSON field where the ID is the ID. We don't even need that. If we've only got one, well, yeah, you know, that would be fine. Just give me the JSON field from, and, and what we're asking for now is this one right here, the dollar sign result at JSON or dot JSON. So we're going to um, receive this. And we're, uh, we, oh, well, we received this one right here from our select and we're replying that JSON record. Isn't that cool? So the JSON data that was in there that, that looked like uh, this, all of that stuff gets sent back to Zim. And all that stuff is what ZimBind wants to know. <laughs> so we didn't do, we didn't like break it up into any fields. We uh, didn't have to worry about our variables. If you take away all of the, the comments here, you're basically looking at maybe three or four lines of code to get data in and out of the database and three or four lines of code on the Zim side to, to bind that to the properties. It's like, whoa. Alrighty, this has been a nice long one, huh? We're trying to usually keep these uh, somewhere around 20 minutes, but um, we wanted to get through those, those two examples on the Zim, uh, Zim site. So here we are, that's, that's what we ended up making. Uh, this has been um, a creative coding with Zim. Yeah. Uh, I tried to, oh, I hit the wrong thing. This has been a learn creative coding with Zim. There we go. <laughs> Call, calling Dr. Abstract, huh? Um, so uh, all the best and look forward to the next one. We continue on with Zim base in the next one and we take a look at uh, how to, to bind with record locking. Cheers.